Hello everyone, Sonic here and welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today we're going to be delving into all the nitty gritty issues that plague RTX on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Mojang hasn't been offering that great of support or bug fixes for RTX over the last couple of years, so I thought I would highlight all these issues, get a little bit of a spotlight on them, and maybe we'll end up getting a little bit more attention dedicated to RTX from Mojang. At the very least, you'll know about all these bugs and hopefully be able to avoid them by the end of today's video. Today we're going to be checking out all of the specific bugs and glitches that riddle ray tracing on Minecraft Bedrock Edition. I've made a previous video on all the overarching issues with ray tracing, such as a lack of feature support, bug fixes and updates, lack of communication about what exactly is happening, and of course, ray tracing not being on the consoles. And if you want to check out that video, link is everywhere. I would highly recommend it. Real quick, a huge thank you to Mad Lad for helping me put together today's video. They put together a huge list and collection of ray tracing bugs and sent that my way and they also put together a massive google document with a lot of details on all these ray tracing bugs that document is down in the description of the video in case you want to check it out and learn more about the specifics of these bugs they also run the unofficial ray tracing minecraft discord and you can check that out for all kinds of ray tracing needs link is down in the description a surprisingly obvious bug is if you turn on ray tracing and you have clouds enabled and then you go into your Minecraft world, you're going to see a lot of these weird chunks all over the place where ray tracing just does not work. Look at how weird that is. It's so noisy. But you can see like regular ray tracing and then this entire chunk is just broken and oily and gross and weird. And there's a lot of them. There's another two or three over there. There's another two, three, four in this area. This is like surprisingly common. And you can see that we got three of them just like right here. This is so strange. If you've ever gone caving with ray tracing on, then you might have noticed weird areas like that where it's just bright and basically sunny and there might even be daylight as well. And this happens because of chunk calling. Basically, any chunk that is behind the player is going to be unrendered and you might be able to like notice this every now and again if you're super eagle eyed. But basically, any chunk that you don't directly see is unrendered to help with performance and when you're in a cave system, chunks around corners can also be unrendered as as well. Now this has the direct effect on RTX where it seems like there is a big source of daylight coming into caves even though there is absolutely no source of light down here and we are at the bottom of the world. Overall, this is a very weird experience. It's kind of creepy and haunted as well. And it's just a very strange thing. It also looks like super janky as well because you end up with caves that have a bunch of weird light sources in them that definitely should not exist. This is just incredibly, incredibly easy to demonstrate. So we have a ceiling up here, and if we back around this corner, that ceiling is going to get unrendered, allowing daylight to peek through into the cave. And only when we actually approach this area does that chunk get uncold, rendered in properly, and no more sunlight comes into the cave. If you want a really bad example of this, this actually looks like it opens up to the surface, and it tricked me for a second, because that looks like it's actually open up to the surface, and then if you go up here, all of that light slowly fades away and you realize that, no, you're still very, very underground. That light actually ends up behind you as well if you're in the correct spot. See, all of that down there is super bright now because of certain chunks being unrendered. Minecraft will also unrender entities and tile entities when you're not looking at them, and you might have noticed this while playing as well. And this is, of course, to help with performance. If you're not looking at it, there's no reason for it to be rendered, right? Or is there? There is! So with ray tracing, of course, all these things are producing a shadow. As you can see here on the ground, we got shadows from the chest, the creeper, and the villager. And if I turn around, all that stuff is going to unrender immediately. Besides the villager, which I'm very surprised he's actually rendered at all. If I turn to the side slightly, you'll start to see some of those chest shadows randomly pop into existence. And that creeper can back all the way up to me, and we won't see its shadow, even though it's like literally right there. One of the biggest issues 
issues with ray tracing right now is that V-Sync can take away a massive amount of your performance, like up to 50% of your performance, making your game lag way more than it should. So in the upper right, you can see a little section of stats from GeForce Experience telling us how my computer is doing. And right now we have V-Sync turned on and you can see that GPU utilization is around 60%, 70%. Now, we are using a texture pack from Mad Lad that actually fixes this issue and gives you the ability to change your V-Sync. So, we're going to go ahead and turn off V-Sync, restart the game. Now that I've turned off V-Sync, you can see that GPU utilization is up to near 100% like it should be. And this is giving us better performance in the game. So, if you're having some lag issues, you might just need to turn off V-Sync. V-Sync is on by default and there isn't really a way to change it unless you have a specific resource pack like to find a PBR from Mad Lad, which actually gives you the option here in your video settings. There's an easy way to break the entire skybox using ray tracing. So right now it's a sunrise. If we go into our settings and go down to video settings, all we need to do is turn off of beautiful skies while in the game. And now the skyblocks is frozen in place. So we can demonstrate this by setting it to midnight real quick. And as you can see, time set to 18,000, but the sky is still exactly the same. If we go back into our settings and turn beautiful skies back on, we're going to see that skybox update immediately. And bam, now it is nighttime. That is so incredibly broken. And this works both ways as well. So right now it is nighttime, of course, but if we just go into our settings and adjust the beautiful skies, bam, I have power over the solar's system it's now it's now daytime another big issue is that candles cannot have a pbr textures meaning that they are incapable of emitting light in ray tracing mode as you can see no matter how many candles you got they literally cannot produce light of any kind even though they've been in the game for over a year and what structure is lit basically using entirely candles of course the ancient city so if you come down here with ray tracing on you're going to be able to see even less of things as you can see none of these candles are producing any light at all i didn't know it could get darker down here that's not the end of the woes for the ancient city. There's a new bug in 119.20 that breaks lanterns, soul lanterns, and end rods. These things have a system called point light, and that is broken for these specific blocks. So if you look around the ancient city, you're going to find a bunch of weird areas where there's some yellow light coming from seemingly nowhere, and that is due to these lanterns. So as you can see, this lantern is the only one in the area, and that weird yellow light is coming from this lantern if we break this lantern that goes away so you can see this in a lot of different areas in the world but this also has the effect of making these blocks way dimmer than they normally would be making it much harder to actually have a playable experience with them it's easier to demonstrate this on the surface as you can see we got a whole bunch of different random points of light over here and those are all coming from these end rods and lanterns which are placed in completely different areas so if we place down a lantern turn right here you're gonna see that little bit of light pop up and a little bit more light over there pretty much no matter where you place down a lantern in your world you're gonna get another random bit of light like several blocks away for no apparent reason and it is just super busted looking i mean look at how janky that is that's not all the woes of the ancient city. Sometimes the warden will have this broken texture where the ears are giant and it kind of looks like a Mickey Mouse. It's super silly. Also, there are four bugs on screen right now if you can catch them all. At this point, I think we're all pretty aware of what spectator mode is. You can fly through the ground and x-ray to your heart's desire. I present to you anti x-ray i guess this is actually really interesting and it confused me for a second when i first looked at it but basically the insides of all these blocks are not being unrendered so it is like the actual blocks here so all of these little cave systems that you see are actually hollow and all of this down here is strip mines and other cool stuff like that it's pretty fascinating honestly yeah this is honestly just really cool to explore and just fly around your world and see what's up because it's it's very different it's just pretty unique like, you can actually see the underside of all of the terrain, which in its own is pretty fascinating to see. Oh my god, we can be inside of the birch tree. This is... 
not what no this is the worst thing that could possibly happen to me the spyglass also has a couple of issues with ray tracing as well so if we just look at the normal terrain you can see that not much is too different besides the actual like texture of the spyglass it should have like the little black square and stuff so that's very weird if we look at any body of water as you can see it is just like basically a perfect mirror it's very strange you can see all the reflections in the mountains and it's just this really weird blue color and if we look at clouds as you can see those render very incorrectly as well it's just not how it should be they're kind of like inverted to be fair you don't even need a spyglass to break clouds just moving around your world with ray tracing on will oftentimes result in the cloud textures breaking and you'll see that on the sides of the clouds they can also just like completely jitter around as you just saw there and teleport from place to place that was very jarring i thought i teleported oh wow look at that that's not that's not right at all that's very very incorrect. <laughs> I'm not teleporting. I'm just over the same bit of land. It's hard to tell though, isn't it? Because the clouds move around so weird. How is this game so broken with ray tracing on? I mean, come on guys, look at this. It's not even hard to see. I haven't even done anything to the game. I literally am just playing in a Minecraft world and the clouds are just going haywire. Please stop. Get some help. This next one's a little bit hard to demonstrate, but it's also super weird. So you know how the sun has god rays and you can see those underwater and they look kind of beautiful. Now the moon has those as well. However, they are much more faint. So bear with me, you might not be able to see them. Now, you would expect the god rays to be coming from the actual direction of the moon, but they're actually coming from the opposite direction, so they're coming from over here, and you can just barely see them. It's easier to show you this with a shadow, so if we place down a pillar of blocks, as you can see, the shadow is on this side, even though that is where the light source is originating from. So the game thinks that the moon is actually over there, and you can just barely make out those god rays if you really really look closely so everything i've showed so far is just mild cosmetic issues but what about a serious issue where gravity blocks are literally invisible you can't see the gravity block at all while it is falling and this is just right before the undertaking i mean look at that that is just kind of silly <laughs> You can't see those falling at all when ray tracing is on. Of course, if we turn ray tracing off, you can see those falling as normal. Now, this has real world implications as well, because not only do anvils just randomly fall from the sky all the time, but there is patches of sand or gravel that constantly get updated in your Minecraft world. And if you're caving or just walking through the desert, that could be a bad time for you. This next one is just plain annoying. All the clothes and villager trade badges on villagers just do not render when you have ray tracing turned on. So this is ray tracing on versus ray tracing off. And as you can see, all the villagers basically look identical when you have ray tracing on, which is very silly and they look kind of naked and it's kind of weird. Ray tracing also makes all banners render completely blank and as their default state. So not only does this affect the actual banners for Minecraft itself, including the pillager banner, it also affects the detailed banners and little shameless promotions like this one right here. It's missing a couple of letters. I wonder what it says. I cannot find a U for the life of me, but you should hopefully be able to figure it out by now. Consider it. Maybe? I don't know. It's, this joke has gone on long enough. Moving on. There's another new bug in 1.19 where as soon as you load into a world with a ray tracing pack enabled, it's going to show you a little pop-up at the top of the screen saying that your resource pack has fallen back to lower quality textures. As you can see, resource pack fallback, low memory, textures have a reduced level of detail, which is not great. I haven't been able to find very much of specific detail about this bug. There isn't much information about the bug report on it, so I'm not sure if it's actually affecting anything. A super silly and basic RTX bug is that you can't turn RTX on or off while you're sitting in a boat. So like I'm pressing the button to turn RTX on and it's just not doing anything. If I turn it on and then get into a boat, I cannot turn it off. And that's just a quality level RTX bug, like how my skin is just non-existent. Saving the biggest bug for last, we have to talk about the Bedrock Edition Denoiser. A Denoiser is essentially an algorithm that tries to clean up and sharpen images, make things look just a little bit nicer, and fill in some of the blanks for missing data. However, the Bedrock Denoisers do a terrible job, and they do not keep hardly any of the original image quality for things that you're looking at. This is kind of complicated, and I don't understand all of it, so I'll try and boil it down 
down for you. If you want more information, then you can check out the Google Doc in the description of the video from Mad Lad. So Minecraft's ray tracing, it uses a path tracing, which is inherently random. Rays are cast into the world and random directions at each pixel and bounce around collecting lighting data. When a ray intersects with a light source, that pixel and the surrounding surface are lit accordingly. And this means that there's a random chance for any given ray to actually hit a light source, giving smaller light sources a much lower chance of being accurately represented in the final render. Due to the lack of accurate data, a denoiser is needed to fill in the blanks, and a denoiser's job is basically to observe all the lighting data, remove the noise, and account for the missing lighting data, and Minecraft has three types of denoisers that I won't get into here for different types of jobs, and all of them are terrible at retaining the original lighting quality and image quality. Other denoisers in other programs perform a much better job in almost every way. So on screen, there's been a variety of different images showcasing denoiser on versus denoiser off. The only way to turn the denoiser off is by using an external program, either Chi Engine and or Render Bender, which is kind of advanced and most people will never be doing that. Essentially, if the denoisers were improved and actually upgraded like they should be, the image quality would be significantly better, sharper, and more enjoyable. For the most part, I don't think the average viewer will directly notice the effects of the denoisers. However, once you do notice it and you start paying attention, it is fairly obvious to spot situations where the denoiser isn't doing a very good job. That is far from all of the issues with RTX, but that is too many for one video to cover, so maybe there will be a part three. Let me know if you guys want more RTX issues down in the comment section. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you have enjoyed. If you have, then consider dropping a like or maybe subscribe if you're new here. That way you don't miss future videos like this one. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys down in the comment section and in the next one. And then there was silence.